long before Pacific Coast Highway was constructed and container ships sailed into the port of Los Angeles. The region, now known as the South Bay, was just a simple stretch of land, perfectly positioned along the Pacific Ocean. In 1851, the 21-year-old Phineas Banning left his home on the East Coast and arrived at a tiny port called San Pedro. At the time, the port consisted of just a shack and a rickety pier owned by the Sepulveda family. The energetic young Banning, however, saw visions of an international port. It wouldn't be easy, but before long, his dreams would come true. Every person and every place has a story, a unique narrative of experiences and events that create a distinct history. Remembering our story is important because our past provides perspective for our present and direction for our future. In order to know where you're going, you first have to know where you've been. In 1858, Phineas Banning acquired land to build a harbor. Five years later, Banning named the new city Wilmington, after his birthplace in Wilmington, Delaware. Shortly after, in 1864, Banning built a permanent residence for his family in Wilmington, symbolizing Banning's confidence in the future of his community. The landscape of the region would see many changes over the next few decades. Channels were dredged, breakwaters were built, docks were constructed, and an extensive network of stage and freight routes were established. It would take much perseverance, but eventually Banning's dreams were realized. Soon, his simple stretch of land grew into one of the world's largest international ports. Though often overlooked, Wilmington, the heart of the harbor, now spans 9.14 square miles and is home to 54,000 people. This is the place that God chose to raise up a church with international influence, a church whose sound would be heard around the world. The story of Harbor Christian Center begins in the 1930s. God spoke to Helen Carl and her husband Norman about a place called Wilmington. He wanted them to build a church there. The reason the church was founded, Sister Carl had a vision, she had a dream, and the Lord showed her the dock workers. And dock workers, that was before Longshoremen, before the union was organized, and, and dock workers really had it hard. It was, it, was a, it was hard work for little pay. She saw them, and so she just felt compelled to, to move from their place in Long Beach and move to Wilmington and begin the church. She literally started uh, the church in the early 30s during the Great Depression as a soup kitchen and just to feed people and not only dock workers but cannery workers and, and anyone who just needed help and so uh, what she would do is bring them in and feed them and, and, and preach the gospel to them. She was a dynamic Pentecostal Holy Ghost preacher. And people began to get saved and God began to work in people's lives and that's how the church uh, began. Originally called E Old Time Gospel Mission, Pastor Helen and a small congregation first met in an old grocery store building located in East Wilmington. The crowds continued to grow until there was standing room only in the church. The presence of God was so strong that unsaved people ran up to the altar even before the sermon was preached. Then, one Sunday morning during service, a telegram arrived informing the church that their building was scheduled to be torn down. A new four-lane highway, now known as Pacific Coast Highway, was being built and the church was right in its path. After much prayer and a series of miraculous events, Pastor Helen and the congregation were able to rebuild the church on the side of the new highway. It was truly a labor of love as dozens of church members volunteered their time and resources. E Old Time Gospel Mission was a vibrant church filled with the power of God. Not even World War II could dampen the move of the Holy Spirit. Because of Wilmington's close proximity to the naval base, the area came under the blackout rules. When air raid sirens sounded, lights had to be dimmed. In order to hold church services, windows had to be covered, and only one candle was allowed inside. 
Even under these precarious conditions, the church continued to thrive. It's so important to remember where we came from so that we could be grateful, we can be thankful, and we can know who did it for us. The gospel mission also demonstrated an innovativeness not found in many churches. For instance, a loudspeaker was installed outside of the church which allowed people to listen to the worship and the teaching while seated in their cars. Many lives were impacted for Jesus through this unconventional method. I think remembering our stories, it's important because of where we've been and where we are and where God's taking us. And that is important because he has, he has brought us so far. God has been so incredibly faithful. That story and, and, and our conversion, the way that God has touched our life, that is a story that the world needs to know. They, they're looking for answers. They're looking for, for people to, to um, give them hope. And your story is important. Your story is critical to the life of somebody. I can share you know, a story with someone, with a mom who has a son who's lost. And I can tell that mom, you know what, there is hope because I was just like your son. And there is a God that's able to reach down in the gutter and pick you up and do something great in your life. After 10 years of pastoring, Helen and Norman resigned to go into evangelistic work. Pastor Joe Watkins led the congregation for two years. Then, in 1947, Pastor Herbert Ezell, along with his wife Edna and their two young sons, Harold and Don, moved to Wilmington. Pastor Herbert became the new shepherd of the church. This transition would mark the start of a new chapter in the church's story.